what's going on everybody welcome back to my youtube channel well this is a harvard university admission question which says solve the system of equations x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 equal to 152 and x plus y equal to 2. well our first step towards solving this question is to take the first equation into consideration for example x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 can be taken from x plus y raised to the power of 5. Well, let's go ahead and use binomial expansion to expand this expression. So this will be equal to, using the binomial expansion, x to the power 5 plus 5 x to the power 4 y plus 10 x to the power 3 y squared. Well, I'm going to be writing the binomial expansion such that the coefficient aligns. So I'll be writing it like this, plus y to the power 5 plus 5x y to the power 4 plus 10x squared y to the power 3. Now notice that the coefficient aligns. So this is the binomial expansion for this expression. So let's continue. So we have x plus y raised to the power of 5 to be equal to, now let's add up. So we have x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 plus, now adding this up, you notice that 5xy is common here. So let's factor that out, 5xy. So leaving behind x cubed plus y cubed. Plus, let's also factor this out. You notice that 10x squared, y squared is common here. So leaving behind x plus y. Very good. So we've been able to factor this out. Now, we see an expression here that we can further simplify. This is sum of two cubes. And how do we express that? We have x plus y to the power of 5 equal to x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 plus 5xy. Now, I'm going to be simplifying this sum of two cubes. Sum of two cubes can be written as x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. Cool. So this is how to express sum of two cubes. So close your bracket, plus 10. Now, since this expression has the same powers, we can go ahead and combine the power. So we have xy raised to power 2. You see that? Cool. So times x plus y. Now, I'll be writing this expression, this expression you see here. Since I have x plus y, I'm going to be writing this expression in terms of x plus y. That means we can further simplify this. So we have x plus y raised to the power of 5 to be equal to x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 plus 5xy. Now, I want to simplify this expression, but first I write this x plus y times. Now, simplifying this expression in terms of x plus y, this can be written as x plus y raised to power 2 minus 3xy. Very good. Very good. So, let's go ahead and close our bracket. Plus 10 xy raised to power 2 times x plus y. Very good. So we are on the right track. So we can go ahead and start substituting. Since we have all terms in terms of x plus y and x to power 5 plus y to power 5. So let's go ahead and substitute. So we have x plus y. Remember, the question gave us to be 2. So this becomes 2 to power 5 equal to then x to the power 5 plus y to the power 5 is given in the question to be 152 plus 5xy times now x plus y remember the question says it is 2 now we have x plus y squared remember x plus y is 2 so squaring that i'm going to be having 4 minus 3xy now close the bracket plus now remember that this is 2 right x plus y that's 2 so 2 times 10 xy squared i'm going to be having 20 xy 
squared. Very good. Now, let's go ahead and open up this bracket. So, 2 to the power 5, that's 32, equal to 152, plus, this is 5xy, times, 2 times 4, I'm going to be having 8, minus, 2 times 3xy, I'm going to be having 6xy, very good, plus 20xy squared. We still have one bracket remaining, so let's go ahead and open up this bracket. But before we do that, I'm going to be moving this 152 to the left-hand side. And when I do that, it becomes 32 minus 152, which is negative 120. So this is equal to, now we can open up this bracket, 5xy times 8, I'm going to be having 40xy minus 5xy times 6xy, I'll be having 30xy squared. So this will be squared plus what I have here, which is 20xy squared. So these and these are like terms, which can be added up. So we have negative 120 to be equal to 40xy. So when I add this up, I'll be having negative 10xy squared. So our next step will be for us to move everything to one side. For example, let's move everything to the left-hand side. When I do that, I'll be having 10xy squared minus 40xy minus 120 to be equal to 0. Now notice that 10 can divide through. So let's go ahead and divide through by 10. So this will result to xy raised to the power of 2 minus, so 10 divide, 40 divided by 10, we're going to be having 4xy minus, this will result to 12 equal to 0. So we have a quadratic equation in xy. So factorizing the quadratic equation, I'll be having xy minus 6 times xy plus 2. So this is the factorization of this quadratic equation equal to 0. So we have two cases. We have xy minus 6 to be equal to 0 or we have xy plus 2 to be equal to 0. So for the first case, xy is equal to 6 and for the second case, we have xy to be equal to negative 2. So let's work with this. First case, and then we move on to second case. So let's go ahead with the first case first. So let's start with the first case. So I'm going to be writing case 1. So for case 1, xy is equal to 6. And remember from our question, the second equation is given to us to be x plus y equal to 2. Well, I'm going to be using a quadratic equation to solve this, where x and y are the roots. So let x and y be the root of the quadratic equation p squared minus sum of roots. Sum of roots is x plus y and that is given to be 2. So we have 2p plus product of roots. Product of roots is xy and that is equal to 6 equal to 0. So let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula to solve this. So using the quadratic formula, I have p to be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's substitute. So p will be equal to negative b. That's going to be 2 plus or minus the square root of. So b squared, that's going to be negative 2 squared. That's 4 minus 4 times 1 times c. c is 6. And that's going to be negative 24. So we have 4 minus 24. I'm going to be having negative 20. So all over 2 times 1. That's 2. So simplifying further, we have p to be equal to 2 plus or minus. I'm going to be splitting this to be the square root of 20 times the square root of negative 1. Multiplying this will give us the square root of negative 20. So all over 2. So this becomes p equal to 2 plus or minus. Now the square root of 20 is same as 2 root 5. Now, the square root of negative 1 is i all over 2. So, 
we have two values here p is equal to 2 plus i'm taking the positive sign 2 root 5 i all over 2 or p is equal to 2 now taking the negative side minus 2 root 5 i all over 2 so the value of p here is equal to 2 divided by 2 i have 1 plus 2 root 5i divided by 2, I'm going to be having the square root of 5i. Now, I'll be having the same thing with this, just that the sign will be different. So the value of p here is going to be 1 minus the square root of 5i. So remember, we said the roots of the quadratic equation is x and y. So the value of x and y is equal to, for x, x is 1 plus the square root of 5i. And y is 1 minus the square root of 5i. And by symmetry, this can also be the value for x, 1 minus the square root of 5i. And the value for y, 1 plus the square root of 5i. So these are the two answers we got for x and y from the first case. So let's go ahead and focus our attention on the second case. Now, for our case 2, so I'm going to be writing case 2, we have xy to be equal to negative 2. And remember from our second equation, x plus y is given to be 2, right? Cool. So, let x and y be the root of the quadratic equation, p squared minus sum of roots. Sum of root is x plus y, and that is 2. So, 2p plus product of roots. The product of root is xy, and that is given to be negative 2. So negative 2 equal to 0. So this can become p squared minus 2p minus 2 equal to 0. So we're going to be using the quadratic formula to solve this. p equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b, that's b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So let's substitute p will be equal to negative b that's negative 2 which will give me 2 plus or minus the square root of now negative 2 squared i'm going to be having 4 minus 4 times a that's 4 times 1 times c negative 2 i'm going to be having 8 so 4 plus 8 that's 12 all over 2 times 1 2 so this becomes p equal to 2 plus or minus. The square root of 12 is actually 2 root 3 all over 2. So let's separate the signs. So p is equal to 2 plus 2 root 3 divided by 2. Or p is equal to 2 minus 2 root 3 all over 2. So the value of p now will be equal to 2 divided by 2. I'll be having 1 plus root 2 root 3 divided by 2, I'll be having root 3. I'll have the same thing here, just that it will be of different signs. So this will be 1 minus root 3. So the other pairs of values of x and y are, for x, I have 1 plus root 3. And for y, I have 1 minus root 3. Or, by symmetry, we have x to be 1 minus root 3 and y to be 1 plus root 3. And there you have it. Well, feel free to share your ideas in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video and have learned something from this video, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And like I always say, until next time, take care.